Welcome, movie fans, to a brand new, never-before-recorded episode of Hollow Victories, where good never wins. I'm your host, Matt Presents, joined, as always, by my very caring co-host. Hello, my name is Zip Zap the <laughs> Second. You're not Ziff. He hasn't <laughs> talked to us in, like, a year. I have not heard... You're tr- that's right, I haven't heard from him in, like, a year. <laughs> Joining us today... Not in person, our very special guest. Mitzi, hi. <laughs> That's me. Hey, um, Mitzi, it's nice to meet you. I'm Zip Zap. <laughs> For the first time ever, I don't think, I don't know who you are. Yeah. Can you tell I me mean, a little bit about yourself? I, I, I didn't, okay, first off, we should probably admit, uh, this recording, this is a re-recording. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you've been, been keeping up, uh, I... My my data is gone. I have lost the original. Well, actually, we don't know if I've lost the original recording or not yet. Um, so if it's if in I limbo, the, <laughs> if if I get the original recording back, uh, this version will probably just go up on my second channel as like a bonus episode. That'd be kind yeah. of fun. Uh, right? The lost episode. I'm not. I'm not gonna edit it. I'm just gonna drop our three audio tracks in, and you're just gonna have to deal with all the <laughs> weird noises. Three audio tracks separately as separate videos, and you're gonna have to figure out for yourself <laughs> how they match up. I, Give me I will the audio. Sync. I'll do fun stuff with it. I'll just like cut it to like people aren't responding to each other properly at all. It should be. It should be instead of like the video, instead of like the the image of us all sitting at the table. It should just be us like sitting in a back alley, just like <laughs> Michael's got his head in his hands. You you're just like drinking booze. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'll, I'll just drop our three audio tracks in a file and export it. Sync it up right. Do all the good stuff, but I'm not gonna cut out any of the weird background sounds. Hollow Victory is the lost episode where you get to hear all the terrible chair noises. So today we have a very special double feature. Uh, It's two films from the mid-80s. One was released in 85, one was released in 86, so only a year apart. Both intended to sell toys to toddlers. And uh, Michael, would you like to introduce the Care Bears movie? Yes, so the Care Bears movie was released in 1985. It's an animated film, as Matt said, centered around the Care Bears, sent, um, basically made to sell toys to kids. There's a lot of fucking other animals other than the Care Bears in this. You know, like, there's, there's like, an elephant, there's a lion, there's a monkey. There, there's a lot of them. There's, there's a lot of merchandise potential. Anyways, there's two kids who lost their parents, and they're kind of in a vulnerable state to get initiated into a cult. So the Care Bears show up. And take them to Carolot. Um, but then they realize, like, as they're kind of having fun and fucking around in Carolot, that there is shenanigans going on down on Earth that could threaten all of civilization. His name is Nicholas. Um, he is also a lonely kid. Um, and he is being manipulated by a woman in a book to do bad things. And it takes him a little while to get on board. You know, he's kind of like a little skeptical at first, but like by the end of the movie, he's like full on like just suddenly has bags under his under his eyes like really really evil has a really good musical number you know just uh so the care bears and the two kids that they abducted have to go down and uh you know stop nick stop nicholas from destroying all of careness and humanity yeah that sounds about right that about covers it <laughs> um hope that was a good good Although summary. you left you left out the very important subplot where uh, Good Luck Bear and Grumpy Bear have to fix the teleporter so they can oh, beam yeah. down to Earth. Yeah. That's a very important story that definitely goes somewhere. It's Absolutely. the most important part, honestly. Grumpy Bear is only mildly Grumpy Bear by the end of the movie. <laughs> he goes for a <laughs> was, huge character art. I was just thinking about this. I was just thinking, it's like, imagine one day you... Like, you, you, imagine you are just born, right? And decided right from the get-go, your superpower of love and friendship is going to be being grumpy. <laughs> like, yeah, being... I never, s- <laughs> being I never really... 
understood Grumpy Bear. Because, like, their whole thing is, like, being nice and being friends. And it's like, so he he's going to be nice and be your friend, but he's going to be grumpy about it. I, mean, I watched... Have you never had a cynical friend before? It works. I watched the entire series uh, today because I knew we were recording and I wanted something else to talk about. I still don't understand Grumpy Bear. Like, <laughs> I really thought... Or- uh, no, no, like the 1985 series. I watched the whole yes. thing, and I still don't understand Grumpy Bear. Or at least I watched what I could find on YouTube. I watched as much as I could find on YouTube, which I'm assuming is all the episodes, because that's what the playlist told me, and I'm taking the playlist word for it. Right. Um, I still don't understand Grumpy Bear. I don't understand... I, like, I figured it was something of, like... It's okay to have negative emotions sometimes, you know, that kind of thing. Like, sometimes that's okay. Like, I figured they'd do an episode or something like that with Grumpy Bear, but they didn't. (laughs) He's uh, tired of all the commercialism surrounded by his life. (laughs) He's like, uh, I'm watching Spencer right now, I'm about halfway through. Uh, he's like Kristen Stewart and Spencer. He's just unhappy with the life around him. He's unhappy with how fake the other Care Bears are, you know? He's the only real one. Grumpy Bear is the only one who's aware that he is a product. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Uh, so, Mitzi, you said you just watched the entire show. Michael, what's your experience with the Care Bears? Um, I, I really have zero experience. My little pony, my sisters, had toys. You know, I, I, I saw... I probably saw one of the movies on when I was a kid. Obviously, I, ha- I had friends who were bronies when that like whole thing took off. I, I don't I didn't I watched like an episode or two of like the newer show and it wasn't my thing. Like the hot diggity demon parodies. Um, but like. Yeah, I, I don't know, like I um, Care Bears, there's just there was really nothing. I don't think my si- siblings had toys of them. I don't think I ever saw one of the shows or movies. Uh I knew of their existence. I saw the commercials. That's probably as far as it goes. Yeah, I I did watch both the movies and the shows as a child, but I had barely any memory of it as an adult. Barely. I was like... <laughs> uh-huh. That's the end of the episode. Bye, everybody. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> We're not even going to get to My Little Pony today. <laughs> So, uh, my brother and I definitely had a few Care Bears when we were a kid. Um, I actually went to my parents' house recently and my mom had Good Luck Bear out for, like, uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day decorations. Which I think is so Um, cool and so good. My brother and I, I forget what else we had. My brother had the monkey. He definitely had the monkey. What's his name? Like Playful Heart. Playful Heart Monkey. Uh... Care Bears Cousins from Care the Bears Feeling Cousins. Forest, or Forest they, of Feelings. Who I believe were, like, introduced in this movie. I think this movie was sort of a commercial specifically for the Care Bears Cousins. <laughs> it's like, where did the Care Bears Cousins come from? Because obviously, like, the Care Bears whole deal is that, like, they're they're easy to reproduce. They're all exactly the same, yeah. just with, like, a different symbol on their stomach. They're in the whole series, though. They're in. They're and, in all the episodes. Well, uh, this movie was like. The, this this was before the, the series. Yeah, this is before the show. This 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 leads into the series. Yeah. Uh, unlike My Little Pony, which happens like mid show, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, I actually did not know it led into the series. I don't remember if I just forgot it from the last take or it wasn't mentioned from the last take. <laughs> Um, so uh, the Care Bears cousins show up, they meet the Care Bears cousins, including Braveheart Lion. <laughs> I lo- gotta love that name. Um, also, like... Was what this is- before or after the stuff that Mel Gibson did? Well, this was, like, a decade before the movie. <laughs> okay. Although, it, that, it's, it, Braveheart is based on a real person... There's, there's lots of heart elephant, and then there's uh there's a pride heart or proud heart cat. There's a bright heart, the owl. There's no uh, no what? bright heart raccoon. 
Oh, okay, never mind. I, I don't know why I was thinking it was an owl. I just watched this. I'm like my brain is losing it. Um Gen- gentle heart lamb, playful heart monkey, cozy heart. I could have sworn penguin. there was a bird though. Yeah, cozy heart penguin. I was just I was yes. getting mixed up. And there was a dog too. What was the dog's name? I can't find the dog's name on this I list. I can't remember. Oh, there's a dog too. Dog heart dog. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta look at it now. I gotta find it. Care Bear Dog. I gotta know, cause I'm gonna, I'm beating, I'm beating myself up about not knowing that Brightheart was the raccoon. So I gotta know. Care Bear Dog. The dog was just named Greg. Greg. (laughs) Greg the dog. (laughs) Loyal Heart! Loyal Loyal Heart Dog. Loyal Heart Dog. That's a good one for the dog. I buy that. So cute. God damn um, it! I I have like I'm working on a fucking project where like one of the jokes is that they like, there's like all these dramatic names and then there's a character named Greg. It's not a very original <laughs> joke, is it? In some <laughs> versions of Loyal Heart, Loyal Heart has like a little like patch above the eye that looks like a heart, and it's so cute. <laughs> I will say that about this movie is it is cute. I think that like the animation on this one worked a lot nicer than the oh, yeah. My Little Pony movie. Because it's like, the expressions are there. I think sometimes it's almost like more expressive than it needs to be. Like the facial expressions are changing like at a very quick pace. It's like, good on the animators. They did a great job, but it's just like, you can tone it down a little bit. But it did look like pretty appealing throughout the whole thing. Like they put, I, I think that kids movies nowadays probably don't, I mean, okay, a lot of them do, but like when it's like something for like this, for like, Care Bears, I don't feel like they put the same effort into the animation that they used no, to. No, they don't. Like... It's very low budget. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the animation in this was pretty good. Um, the only one I feel like was all that over-animated, and I think it worked for him, was Fettuccini. Yeah, a lot of, no, lot of love put into every, Fettuccini. Every frame of Fettuccini was perfect. I think the Care Bears are just <laughs> making these like stupid expressions sometimes where it's like, just give them a normal expression here. Make them smile. You don't have to have them with their mouth all the way open, wide open. <laughs> yeah, no, no Fettuccini, Fettuccini was absolutely solid. worked for it. <laughs> <laughs> Fettuccini yeah. was like the most needed character to be expressed with. And Nicholas gets there by the end. Oh, yeah. Uh, can we talk about how the Care Bears are all like, oh, no, the, you've got to care. You, 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 he's not caring anymore. But it's like the the evil book seems like she cares a lot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, a lot about ending the world. She cares deeply. I've been thinking a lot about this. I've been thinking a lot about what the argument could be and i i've got i think i've got a solid argument it's it's the not caring about like humanity it's like the not caring about like ruining people's lives and hurting others but it's like it's 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 choosing evil and 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 valuing that over you know like the the darkness and in terrible like like it's it's valuing that over like the lives of other people and like the happiness of others oh yeah me and matt are one thousand percent overthinking this yeah (laughs) it's just like probably you're right but like (laughs) they're associating the word care as a positive thing 100 percent yeah in reality yeah they're not very specific they're just like oh yeah you you have to care, but they don't say about what. So it's like you got to be more specific than that, man. You can't just say care. It's the fundamentals um. of caring. <laughs> I want to talk for a minute about something I saw in uh the TV show, and that is that there is like a villain character called Professor Coldheart. <laughs> who's just like this like is is he one of the cousins no he's like he's a villain he's human he he is a hu- yeah he's a human ish he's like all like blue and like cold and stuff like that and he just goes around causing mischief and terrible things to happen to people 
He's um, a 30-year-old who reviews cartoons on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> he did not like the Cuphead show. He wishes that they did it by hand, hand-drawn animation. Michael, you realize that's us in like four years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> He's come to terms with it. He's accepted it. I can it. be cold. That's I can be cold acceptance, heart. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to pull up an image of this guy for you. Nicholas is absolutely the best part of this film. Oh, he's yes. fun. Right? Like, I really do not care about the Care Bears. <laughs> Nicholas makes this movie. <laughs> He is, like, kind of, like, just a standard character throughout he goes, most of the movie, but in the last act, he goes fucking nuts, and it's really yeah. fun to watch. He goes so unhinged. Um, I really like the book, too. The book is funny. Um. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I like the character design well enough, although it is very clearly based on the magic mirror from Snow White. Yeah. Like, it's, it's the same kind of character. But uh, uh, I think it works. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Can we get just this as the thumbnail if this goes up on the second channel? <laughs> okay. Okay. That'll, that'll be the second channel thumbnail. <laughs> so, a, a lot of very prominent voice actors on this, although not a lot of household names. The biggest name on this is Mickey Rooney. As, mm-hmm. uh... Adult Nicholas, spoilers, but the 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 old man you see at the beginning of the movie, it's Nicholas as oh, an shit. adult. How could you ruin that for them? That's like the whole experience. <laughs> wow, that's an important. That's a spoiler right there. I, we should put a spoiler alert at the beginning of this. Honestly, <laughs> uh, Mickey Rooney, of course, famous for playing Santa in the old uh, Rankin Bass specials. Forgot the name Rankin Bass last time too. Uh, I mean, decently popular actor. He was in a lot of stuff in like the the sixties. Oh man, we Rankin Bass. Fox now? and the Hound. We're getting the Bass tier list. Fox and the Hound, Night at the Museum, Peach Dragon, apparently. Also, also people like uh, Georgia Ingle and uh, Jackie Burroughs. Some some. Like, plenty of decently popular voice actors. Oh, shit, Absolutely. yeah, he, Peach Dragon, he's the one who sings the song about how he swears he saw a dragon. That's a, that's a good <laughs> shit. Uh, Brian George is Mr. Fettuccini, and he, he's been in a lot of stuff. He, he, he's been in, like, Animaniacs and Freakazoid, uh, so just voices on, like, all these cartoons. He's in a lot of video games, too. He's, like, a video game voice actor. It's a good cartoon voice, for sure. I mean, Mr. Fettuccini is, like, not that yeah. important to the movie, but it feels like he w- he was the result of them just kind of want- wanting to let their, like, fun side out. <laughs> he was probably more fun to... He was probably more fun to animate than any character, but also probably more of a challenge, because there's more details to him. Yeah. Uh, and the voice was like, you know, yeah, it does have a very over the top cartoonish voice. There is like, you know, for, again, for like a movie that's really only made to sell toys and also appeal to like really young children, it's like, there's clearly an effort that went into this, an effort that they probably didn't have to put into it, but they did, so you can appreciate it. Um, the way I described this movie in the last take, and I'll describe again in this take, is like, it's just so inoffensive. Like, yeah, it's not a good movie. I'm not I'm not going to sit here and, like, go on about how great it is, but it's just, like, it's so inoffensive. There's, like, almost no reason to be harsh on it. It's, it, it's like, it knows what it needs to be, and it does it well. The people who worked on it did their job. Yeah. Fulfilled expectations. No. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like, neither of these are really bad movies. These are just... Like th- these are movies that do exactly what they need to do, <laughs> right? They they are exactly what they're supposed to be. Um, what else do we have to say about this movie? <laughs> Cause we we didn't have a lot to say last time, and yeah, I mean, it's animated well. Yeah, well animated, and it's kind of funny how extreme nicholas gets by the end of it but it's yeah it's just like it's clearly not made for me <laughs> i mean clearly it's not made for me 
But I mean, they put a decent amount of it. They put more effort into it than they probably needed to, and I can respect that. Oh, and, I was gonna say. I, I guess yeah. I'll I'll say what I said last time, which is it uses one of my favorite tropes, which is friendship is lasers. Like, <laughs> I I love Care Bears. I love the Care Bear stare. I love that it's just like. Yeah, we can defeat him with the power of friendship, which we're literally going to turn into an actual weapon, like, for real. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I just looked at the IMDb trivia section. The top piece of trivia for this is that Weird Al mentions the film in the song You Make Me from his oh. 1988 album Even Worse. Which it's like, that's the most interesting thing about this movie. Weird Al mentioned it in a song. <laughs> I'll watch that uh, after this episode. <laughs> I'm curious. All right. I, I guess that's all we have to say about the Care Bears movie. <laughs> Nicholas was fun. Good animation. Did exactly what it needed to. Yeah, it, it is like... here. Here's one more thing I guess I'll say just to put it into perspective, really. is just like... I think it is, pr in in terms of what it's trying to be, I think it's better than most of the stuff we've covered on the show. I would, in terms of personal enjoyment, I would still put it pretty low on the oh, list. Yeah, I, I agree. These are two of the most well-made movies we've talked about, but they are two of the movies I've enjoyed the least. Like, Dragon Ball Evolution was more fun to watch than this, but it's just, like, in terms of what it's trying to be, it fucked up way worse than this movie. It's just like, it, but it's kind of funny, you know? When we yeah. sat down to watch these movies, I, I said, that, like, the first thing I said was like, all right, I'm re I'm prepared to be the only one genuinely enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> but I did enjoy watching it with you guys. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. That was fun. You guys that's make this sort of the, the funnest experience ever. And to anyone who does, like, stuff like this, even if you're older or you're younger, like, more power to you. It's, for me, for me personally, there's no way in hell I was going to enjoy this. Like, the second Matt presented it, like, <laughs> didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> the second that was, like, presented. That's the name of the channel. Yeah. The second that was, like, suggested as the next two, it was like, I knew I wasn't going to enjoy, like, I wasn't going to enjoy the movies for themselves. I thought, I, I did think I was going to have fun watching a few guys, because I always do. Mm -hmm. But it's like, because Mitzi even joins in on the ones that Mitzi's not a guest on. Mitzi often joins for these calls. You were there for I just Tank like being a parasite. Last Airbender. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, but it's like, it's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with, there, like, legitimately, there is nothing wrong with it. It's just... Oh yeah, no, I, I like, I don't expect you guys, like, it, that's the thing, is like, I don't expect you to justify anything to me, I don't expect you to excuse anything to me, it's literally just like, my, like, half my brain is devoted to stuff like this, like, I am so deeply into this, but I'm well aware nobody else would be, it's like- What I was going to say is, I wanted to do this for several reasons- one of them was just, I think it was a good matchup for Mitzi, because yeah. Mitzi loves these, like, trying to sell a toy movies, so I, I thought it was a good episode to have them in on, um, and also I thought it would be a funny discussion, but also, oh yeah, I own a copy of the Care Bears movie on DVD, I bought it for, I think, 50 cents, when Blockbuster was closing. Maybe 25 cents, but I think 50 cents. But it was just, like, in an envelope and not in the case. So I couldn't, like, sell it anywhere. I even, like, took it to my local DVD resale shop and I'm like, hey, will you buy this without the case? And they're like, no, we need a case. And I'm like, okay. So I just had to hold on to the envelope for the longest time. Um, I don't have it anymore. Sad. I, I think it's an interesting conversation for the show because when people think bad movies, you, you know, for some people they're gonna they're they're not it's not gonna be like this, but most people are immediately gonna go to stuff from their childhood. They're immediately mm -hmm. going to like where it's like, oh yeah, I used to like this because I was a kid. Like, you know, there's people who would you know consider like the Barney movie like a horrible piece of shit. There's people who would consider <laughs> um Oh yeah, man, let me let me think. Like I was talking about, like really young kids. Like the SpongeBob movie, adults love that still. But like uh, like Barney, the Care Bears, My Little Pony, all that stuff. Like just stuff that's made for like little little children. It's gonna go there. But there is an audience for it, you know. 
Have you ever rewatched Barney's Great Adventure? I uh, know. <laughs> it, it is it is shot like a horror movie. I want to watch. Let's do it. <laughs> movie I night like or Hall of Victories. They, <laughs> they brought in like a cinematographer from a horror movie and forgot to tell him it was a Barney movie. <laughs> I I was about to say, have you ever thought about the um the phenomenon of Barney being such a wildly hated character amongst children, like popular yeah. but hate like there's so many songs and parodies about barney getting beat up or let's dying. get together and kill barney <laughs> yeah yeah no i i remember i remember catching on to that like way sooner than my peers so i drew a comic about kids singing like one of those let's kill barney songs and then barney just comes out of the shadows and kills him <laughs> oh man was it was it weird al or someone else who did the elmo's got a gun song that was somebody uh, else, was, I think. That was not Weird Al. Although it was probably erroneously attributed to Weird Al back in the Wild West days of the internet where every parody song just automatically got labeled Weird Al. Yeah. Even if it sounded nothing like him. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I specifically remember this song that was like Secret Asian Man. <laughs> and it was not a Weird Al song, but it would always pop up as a Weird Al song. And I'm like, that, nope, nope, it's by someone else. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to My Little Pony. Mitzi. Mitzi. Yes, me. Um, So My Little Pony is a movie. And I, I, I am going to again just read off the IMDb description. Uh, Ponyland comes under attack from the Schmooze, a massive purple ooze created by an evil witch who plans to destroy the pony's annual spring festival. Uh directed by mike jones and i'm not even sure if it's supposed to be pronounced like jones uh and uh gary i can't pronounce his name either uh ray lee that's the only last name that i feel confident pronouncing um it also stars danny devito <laughs> no, his name shows very, up first um, in the t in the opening but he's barely in it <laughs> stars is a very liberal word we're here like it's a very broad term right now <laughs> yeah that's plans to destroy the ponies annual spring festival sounds like s such an understatement like she destroys the ponies home like, who cares about the festival? Their home is being destroyed. And literally, like, the entire country of Pony. Yeah. <laughs> of, of... Equestria? Equestria? Is it... Equestria is, it called is like... Equestria? <laughs> to my knowledge, Equestria is, like, the world. Like, the Earth. Was that not what they're, like, destroying in this movie? It's kind of unclear probably, yeah. what what all they intend to destroy with the smooths. Yeah, I don't know when they started. I it might have been in the newer season or the newer series, but like I don't fully know when they started calling Ponyland Equestria. Like I don't know when that transition was made. I couldn't tell you. Um, my brain is scrambled egg. So. <laughs> Uh, Michael kind of already talked about his feelings on the My Little Pony series. Mitzi, tell us about your experience with My Little Pony. Um, I loved it. I loved My Little Pony so much as a kid, and it was very weird to grow up and then become a teenager and young adult in a world where My Little Pony became very popular, <laughs> like, with, with people my age. So I was like... It, I, I felt kind of like a hipster, and I feel bad for this. Like, I feel, I'm like, I, I liked it before it was cool. I was here first. And it's like, I would get shit for it, and I'd be like, you're an adult that likes My Little Pony. It's like, a motherfucker, I never stopped. Like, <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> I've been here. Yeah. I watched the first, like, two episodes of... Friendship is magic, because I had a friend who was a brony, and I went into it with an open mind. I'm like, okay, maybe this will be a good show, but I'm like, it's fine, but it's, it's like a little saccharine for my taste. Like, and it's, I don't think it's interesting to make up for it. Like, 
Powerpuff Girls was pretty saccharine, but it's a really good show on top of that. It's really funny. There's a lot of good action in it. Well, yeah, Powerpuff Girls, the whole jo- like joke behind that show is it was like, the characters are really cutesy, but then it's like very graphic and violent. I mean, it's a, it's a Cartoon Network show that had blood in it, you know? Yeah. The, the 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 whole thing is that they were made from fucking like nuclear chemicals or some shit. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Chemical X. Chemical X, yes. baby. Brand X. I uh was a lot less open minded to it when it first came out. I eventually hit an age where I was just like, just let people if the people like it, let them like it. Um Yeah. But, uh, I did eventually sit down and try to watch it, and it was just like yeah, I mean, like, really, from a, a expre- like, just from, like, an objective standpoint, even though the show was never something that appealed to me, oh my god, is the show a lot more expressive than the old, like, the movie we're about oh. to talk about. Like, oh, they, yeah, no. they, like, got designs down that looked so much nicer. Absolutely. I think the ponies are much more distinguishable, I think they all have much clearer personalities, and I think the, the character design is a lot better. Yeah. The movie is, of course, uh, a part of the series. When did this come out in the series? Between, like, the first and second season? I have the wiki up. (laughs) When did the movie come out? Between the first and second season? Oh, uh, hmm. Looking at it, this came out after the original run of the series, but before, like, some sequel series Okay, so it was, like, towards the end of the Gen- Generation 1 series. Because there's, no. there's the, also the generation that came out after it. No, I'm wrong. It came out, like, between seasons 1 and 2, it looks like. Okay. F- from from what I can tell. Because uh, there, there's, like, a point in this film where they're like, Oh, no, we need help. And they're like, Oh, I know, let's go to such and such character. And they act like this is a character the audience should be familiar with yeah uh, no that character I absolutely is in the, was not that character is in the show um yeah. uh the the moochick yes he he's Played the one who Tony gives them, randall he's the one that gives them the rainbow in the first place that they have to retrieve that's part of why i wish i wish you guys had <laughs> actually watch some episodes i realized that we didn't have time but there's a very important because like there's a very important like first like opening episode like rescue at midnight castle and that's when they actually like get the rainbow and they set up like where they get megan and all that kind of stuff which by the way like uh, them going to get megan it's one of them, like, one of them goes, flies, like, one of the Pegasus flies to get Megan, and it's literally just like, hey, what's up? Uh, I'm a Pegasus, and we need you to help us. And she's like, oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> Oh, you kinda... need me to, no, no, no. But she's like, oh, you need me to help you? Like, I can't do anything. And she's like, yes, you can. Come on, get on my back. And then she sings a whole song about believing in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kid, the kid feels really out of place in this honestly the main characters of this film are the villains oh yeah right 100 kind of like how care bears the most interesting part was the villains the most interesting part of this is the villains they're the main characters the yeah, female like, well, mario Bear- and waluigi in care bears there's definitely <laughs> like yeah nicholas is the most interesting part but you can definitely say it's a movie that focuses on the care bears in fact it wants to show more and more of them off as the movie goes on there's like a you know, there, there, there's a lot of them. Where in this movie, it really did not spend that much time on like the fo- what, what should have been the focus. But at the same time, the villains are more entertaining than the other characters. So I'm not. I think it works in the movie as like favor. I think it would have been more yeah. pain in the ass to watch if it wasn't for that. But it's just like, you know, if this is what you wanted to do, why are you making a My Little Pony movie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like, there's this whole plot about this one pony who's, like, showing off in a talent show, and then she and Spike run off, like, on their own, and that just... Nothing really comes of it. Eventually they run back into the other ponies, and it's like, okay, well, we're together again. And there's not even, like, a lesson to her story. There's Because you think, like, oh, she was showing off. Now she's gonna learn, like, ah, uh, she can share the spotlight with a friend. No, that never happens. There's no resolution to, to her 
showing but off during a show. Her running away is like completely inconsequential to li- literally anything else that happens. Yeah, no, <laughs> you, this this is an unnecessary part of the movie, and yet it's sort of. The main plot, it's at least what they're pitching as the main plot. It's the first main plot they pitch, but then they pitch, like, a couple of others. Yeah. It, it was like they they wrote the plot, like, halfway through, and then they just decided to change it when they were, like, halfway through animating it, and they were just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, okay, so there's one pony and Spike run off... Actually, no, that's boring. Like, like they've written, like, 20 pages of, of the Pony and Spike run off, and then they're like, this is boring, let's write something else. But they didn't want to throw out those pages. <laughs> or maybe, like, like they wrote the, the, the script the way they wanted, and then they're like, ah, we need, like, 20 minutes. Ah, hold on. Running away with Spike's subplot. Put that back in. It was like they they had three writers and then they were like, okay, you write a movie, you write a movie, you write a movie, and then later we'll get together and we'll just shuffle them like cards. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Honestly, with the pacing of the villain scenes, I wouldn't even be surprised because there is like three different things going on in the movie that have, n- have almost nothing to do with each Okay, like the schmooze and the other ponies who are just like being like, oh, they get covered in the goo and they get angry after that those two are pretty connected to be fair but the other one yeah the like the third story like they're not even able to connect it it's just like i don't i don't know it, i i think it's supposed to be that they're the focus movie maybe it could connect if it was like oh they come they come back to save the day or something but it's like that doesn't happen yeah no there's really no resolution to that plot it just sort of happens no it's just such fucking nonsense <laughs> We should talk about this film's all-star cast. We got a, a, a person, I think this is her second movie on Hall of Victory. She's starting to get into the running now, uh, Nancy Cartwright. Yes, yes indeed. Nancy Cartwright has made her second appearance in a Hall of Victories film. And I gotta admit, this one's a lot better than the last one. Yeah. Um, although go lower than that. Although I think that one <laughs> might be a little funnier to watch. Yeah, Nancy Cartwright. I, I, I might enjoy. I might enjoy watching that one more. Uh, yeah, and and much like how her character in that sounds a lot like Ralph Wiggum or Rod and Todd, her character in this movie straight up sounds just like Bart Simpson. And this did come out before the Simpsons. Yeah, this this did come out before the first Simpsons short was on. Fuck, what was that show that was Tracy Ullman show? Tracy Ullman show. Yeah, this predates the first Tracy Ullman short, but it's it's Bart's voice. It's the same voice as Bart. Yeah, it's just it's now like we know that this came first. <laughs> yeah, there's like a slight difference, but otherwise it's like, no, that's just Bart's voice. Bart got his voice from Gutsy. Although, it's a good voice. It's not, it's not nearly as egregious. Spike is played by the same guy who played the Hamburglar in the wacky adventures of Ronald McDonald, and he's doing the same voice. <laughs> Charlie it's Adler. Just the hamburger's voice. Yes, he looks Charlie so, Adler. He looks so angry in his picture on IMDb. He's just like, he's just so furious. I, w- I will say <laughs> this. Oh, he's ahead. a great voice actor, though. He, yeah. he played Starscream in all the Transformers movies. Uh, he's in Jimmy Neutron. He's in a lot of stuff. Like, uh, the, uh, this is another one with a lot of, like, Who was he popular voice actor talent. Um, I think he might be, like, the, one of the eggs from the movie. Oh, okay. Let me look. Yeah. Let me look. Um, I'll, while you do that, I was just gonna say, like, I think that's actually one thing that Care Bears has over this movie. We, we already talked about that the animation's, like, less, like, the animation's good, honestly, but it's just, like, on the actual ponies. It's not very expressive. They don't emote that mm-hmm. well. Another thing I think Care Bears has over this one is just like some of the voice acting's fine in this movie, but then there's like some that are just so great in the listen to. Like they're really, oh, really yeah. high, and it's just like no. I don't think that there's anything like that in the Care Bears movie. I I would be if I had a kid and they wanted to watch it, I'd be perfectly fine with it. With this one, it's like I mean, if they really wanted to watch it, I'd let them watch it. But it's just like oh my god, it would annoy me while they were watching it. Because some of those voices are just terrible to listen to. That's that's another problem with the plot that goes nowhere. Both of the characters have baby voices. And it's like, oh, please stop. Spike, Spike is very grating. 
Um, um, of Danny course, you DeVito. get Danny DeVito, the top build actor as the Grundle King. The fucking um, Grundle which King. Which is, he's fucking great. <laughs> no yeah. notes. Absolutely perfect. Um, Madeline Kahn, Cloris Leachman, and Rhea Perlman play the the three witches. Mm-hmm. They were good. I mean, like it's like they're like they're not characters that I love or anything, but it's just like okay, like that, for a kids movie that works. Mm-hmm. But we we can't forget Tony Randall as the Moochik, who of course played the classic Brain Gremlin from Gremlins <laughs> Two: The New Batch. <laughs> This is this is not a joke. I am saving up to get a brain gremlin tattoo. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you've mentioned that before. Maybe not on the show. The what? Who did the schmooze? Who was the like? Cause John that, like, Bowser Bauman. That's like the one song in the movie. That's one thing that this sh- movie movie has over the other one though. Is like it has like a good song in it. Yeah, the the, the schmooze's song is really good. <laughs> The schmooze way slaps, more, actually. Way, <laughs> way more memorable than anything in in Care Bears. The animation on the schmooze is really, like, nice, too. And, I mean, to be fair, like, when you're animating goo, I don't know this for sure, but I have to imagine, like, it's it, it looks really detailed, which is nice, but it also is just, like, you're allowed to be messy with it. Right. Because it's goo. But at the same time, I mean, there's a lot of details, so it's kind of like... There's a lot of, like, movement. It's gotta yeah. be fluid. Yeah, so it's like... Because it is fluid. probably easier to animate than, like, a human character, but at the same time, it's like, it's moving a lot more. And it's done very well. Also, I know, I, I like goo. <laughs> I like <laughs> animated goo. <laughs> Satisfying imagery. Uh, yeah, it, it it reminded me a little bit of like the the thing in the Raggedy Ann movie. Yeah, Although yeah. It's, the one in the Raggedy Ann movie is way more way way better animated oh, than this. I mean, the, the Raggedy Ann movie, honest to God, like so I'm saying this. By the way, I'm saying this 100 percent unironically. It's probably like the best animation in any movie ever. I'm I'm pretty sure they have to watch it in like animating classes, right? Right, like yeah, that's got to be like requirements. It, 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 it might legit. <laughs> I, I, it's not my favorite animated movie of all time, but like in terms of like actual animation quality, it might be the best one ever made. I I'm not even being like sarcastic when I say that. That's that's the real hit winner here. You want to talk about movies designed to sell dolls to kids? Raggedy Ann and Andy's Musical Adventure. Yep, <laughs> I'd say that it's a bit. That one's a bit more sincere. Yeah, it's well. It, well that one feels like, like it feels like a movie someone wanted to make about Raggedy Ann and Andy. These feel like movies people made to sell toys. Uh-huh. I mean, that's the thing. I, I that's the thing I like about these movies. Honestly, as oftentimes, what you will get most of the time is a thing that fulfills its purpose. It it does the thing correctly. A solid C. It fulfills all the criteria. But then you've got some stuff that, like, if you get enough people who are passionate about the thing on it, it turns out really good. It turns out like a gem. And it's just like, wow, this is fucking awesome. Like you said before, like, the Lego movie is one of those where it's just like, this this is a toy movie. This is not really meant to do anything except entertain kids and, like sell a product but also like you got people who are like really care about this working on this is why it turned out so good it's really good and it's also just like commentary that you wouldn't expect from a product movie like i mean it's just like it's 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 really it's like really well thought out you can definitely make a good i mean i guess i guess in that sense yeah you can just you can make a good product movie you really can it's just a um, you can make one that like appeals to everyone, not just kids. Uh, yeah, it's really just a matter of getting like the right people on the team. Honestly, like I remember watching, I remember watching like the Twelve Dancing Princesses for Barbie for like the first time, and I remember watching the extras. It was like the first time I was exposed to like mocap and stuff like that, and like using like actual like ballerina dancers to like do the movements on there, and I was just so impressed. Like it, I don't know, it just <laughs> made me so giddy, so happy. Um, yeah. Like, there were people on this project that cared about it. <laughs> Barbie let them use the, the use, let them use their characters for Toy Story 2. That was kind of cool of them. Uh, go ahead, Matt. C- can I be completely honest with you guys? Good. We saw this movie less than a month ago. 
I forgot there were human children in this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, they come in like at a weird time in the movie, like when it's already like past the halfway point. Yeah, and uh, they don't not do anything. The, and not, that's not counting the villains, by the way, because the villains are like technically human children. Well, I was gonna count them as human adults, but okay. Uh, even the I, two I, yeah. twins, they're kind of young. Mm. I think their age is kind of ambiguous. Well, that, we don't actually know. <laughs> there's there's the weird thing where they keep accidentally calling the one lady mom. I guess it's and just she's because like, don't call me mom. And it's like, why would they accidentally be calling you that unless you just decided recently you didn't want to be called mom? Yeah. I also just for me maybe I get adults adults bicker too, don't get me wrong, but also it's just because they're like they're arguing throughout the whole movie and that just reminds me of like younger siblings. All that right, makes fair sense. enough. They definitely look older than the other kids. I just feel like they're like very immature adults. That was my yeah. Take. I I mean traditional villain henchmen. I guess they yeah. could be like the evil stepsisters, you know, from like Cinderella right. or something. Yeah, but I I mean like the children who are friends with the ponies. Yeah, I know. You're I not. totally forgot about them. Yeah, they're not memorable. <laughs> They're less memorable than the kids from the Care Bears movie. Like, at least them, it's like, you know, it's weird that they're there. <laughs> at least it's like... They semi-have a point to the plot, but not much. They are introduced early in the movie. <laughs> they are introduced yeah. at a point where you can remember them and, there. And they they sort of serve as, like, audience surrogates, right? They're just yeah. finding out about the Care Bears the kids in this movie are absolutely not audience surrogates. They're just kids who show up. And they're probably uh, from Megan like, is the one, one of the one shows. Who, Megan is the one who releases the rainbow. <laughs> the ultimate weapon. Maybe that's what the point of that is. It's just like, oh, if you watch the show, then you know who these two characters are and you're cheering that they're on screen now. Yeah, fan uh, service. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to talk about the Moochick. Because they show up and they're like, oh, Moochik, our, our home got destroyed. And he's like, okay, I'll make you a new house. And then it just, like, floats in from out of the sky. And it's like, oh, it's literally a dollhouse. He literally made, like, a dollhouse for them to set down. For them to play in. But then it's so weird. At the end of the movie, uh, like, the Grundles are all like, oh, well, Grundles don't have a home. And they're like, oh, you should take our old castle. We're moving into this house now. And it's like... Wait, but all your stuff's at the castle. You've you've lived at the castle the whole time. Why not move back into the castle and let the Grundles have the new house? <laughs> like, why are you just letting the Grundles have your old house? Why do, why not? Why don't you move back in? It's just like one week later, they're like, "Yeah, we really fucked this one up, guys." I don't know if you guys want to see the like dollhouse as an actual dollhouse, but I figured I'd send it anyway. Hey, there it is, and that's the size it is in the movie too. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally that small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like the way it just floats in, it's like, oh, that's a product. That's something I can buy for my child. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready to wrap this one up? Um, I think I've said everything I need to say about it. Just like, yeah, like, um a animated decently, but not as good of the character design. Um, voice acting ranges from like yeah, yeah, you said Danny DeVito. He does. He's right for the role to let. But then there's also characters that are just like. There's so many kids movies and shows where it's just like the char the characters sound irritated. Why do you do that? Why do you have to be that condescending to kids and that annoying to adults? Like, I mean, if a character like SpongeBob, the voice, like it's gonna annoy some people, but at least like the main intent is to be humorous. You know, and for most people, it is gonna be humorous. But it's like, I don't know. The voice, the voice acting, I think, is a real like is probably like the biggest problem with this one. My 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 last thoughts right now is, guys, I would honestly actually live in this house. Like, I would totally live in this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. This looks so sick. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> like, um, j just like Care Bears, it's inoffensive. It, there's kids who are going to like it, of course, and there's probably, maybe there's even other people that'll like it, and that's perfectly fine. It's it's inoffensive, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's like, even as like a kid's movie, I think it's got problems. Uh, I feel like this and the Care Bears movie probably had comparable budgets, uh -huh. but 
Care Bears spent that more on animation, and this spent that more on celebrity cameos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just the vibe I get from this movie. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Probably. All right. Well, uh, Mitzi, which one did you like better? I hate to betray the ponies, but I did like the Care Bears movie a little bit better. It's probably obvious for me, but same. I'm gonna contradict what I said in the other recording and vote for ponies. <laughs> no, I'm voting for... Oh, man. I'm, no, I'm I'm voting Care Bears. Because, uh... <laughs> like, Care Bears is sort of nothing. I feel nothing about it. And there was a moment or two in Ponies where I got annoyed with it. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know, I'd, I'd rather just think nothing of a movie than be annoyed by it. Yeah. So... I'm gonna go Care Bears. And uh, the audience is with us on this one. The Care Bears movie with 77% of the vote versus My Little Pony's 23%. That's at 52 votes. So so damn, Care Bears by a landslide. Yep. Everyone's on board with Care Bears. Yeah, uh, Care Bears wins. Yeah. Whee! Somebody go tell somebody go tell Champ Heart or not Champ Heart Champ Bear. <laughs> so next time on Hollow Victories, like everyone doesn't already know, <laughs> we're going to the House of Mouse for two gigantic box office bombs, both set on Mars. It's Mars Needs Moms versus John Carter of Mars. <gasps> I am really looking forward to this one. Whoa! Because this is. This is the first matchup where I have never seen either movie. I can't wait to join you guys for it. This is, uh... Not for the episode. I'm not coming back again. Unless unless everybody wants me back. Like, that's what I was thinking about coming onto the show. It's like, either everybody's going to be like, oh, who the fuck is this schmuck? Or they're going to be like, wait, can we get them full time, please? Every Which... comma is going to be replace Mackle. <laughs> 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 and I would do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> this is this will just become our date nights. <laughs> Michael will get pushed out. I'm just gonna go to Zach and just say, "Okay, if Michael is that full time, fuck these guys." <laughs> Zach has his own podcast that is like almost identical to Hollow Victories. <laughs> it's like but the he's, anti. He's Hollow Victories. It's like which two movies are better than the other, but no, which no they, they they talk about good movies and then debate which is worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's Zach, so he picks like Hubie Hall. He puts Hubie Halloween up as like a good movie. <laughs> Zach, and he, he's you. I'm just kidding. He's doing this with someone who is not you. It's yeah. like Zach and Teddy doing this. Yeah, no, no, I'm just like left in the fucking dirt. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Yeah, Michael's gonna get left on the street. Please adopt this poor Michael. Please put him in a box. This poor Just like, give him some. <laughs> give him a bottle of water in like don't one of those little him. hamster he'll, he'll, drip he'll, things. He'll, don't feed him. He'll keep showing up. <laughs> oh no, Michael won't have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Though I'll be. I'll have to go back to derailed. <laughs> oh God. Duckcast and Hollow Victories will be gone. The derailed. I never. The the podcast I never got to be on. <laughs> you were the Halloween episode. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, that's right. That's right. The like, Steven Universe one didn't go through. It never happened. That's okay. It fucked up. But to be fair, there's like eight episodes that didn't go up. So <laughs> I need you can cut all of this out of the episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh anything else? Bazinga. Uh, Mitzi. I'm I'm good. I'm I've said all I need to say, man. I've said my all piece. Right. Nothing to plug. No, if if you want to find me, you have to put the effort into it. I'm not just going to tell you how to find me. I'm not going to fucking uh, dox myself. Are you kidding me? <laughs> all right. For my co-host, Movie Mackel, I'm Matt Presents. Have a nice day. Peace. Voice cracked on that one. Every single time I start, like, snorting coke in the middle of the recordings and screaming at the top of my lungs that Matt never includes it.